My guest today is John Skeet. John, how are you? Hi, very well, thank you. Well, other than a sore throat, so uh, yeah, I apologize to everyone listening. I'm very croaky. No, no, you sound so. great. You look great. You don't feel great. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what this is? Welcome to Oslo. NBC thank you. Oslo oh, career. it's lovely to be back here. I was, I was looking through email earlier on, trying to work out when I first came, and it was 2010. I, you know? I first do you came. know when I first came to Oslo? Go on. Sunday. Wow. This is my first trip to Norway. Oh, cool. So, so the whole it's still being late at eleven o'clock at night is kind of that's a little you. bit weird. Yeah, it is. It is. It's <laughs> but a I'm way getting to not used get to much it. sleep. It's, uh, <laughs> that's a factor. Yes, maybe yeah. that's why you're sort of you're I, Well, I've certainly not had much sleep, but that's for various reasons. <laughs> okay. Uh, what What are you excited about these days? So, uh, excited is probably not how I phrase it, but I've been thinking an awful lot about uh, Stack Overflow and culture mm -hmm. and respect and how we can have a community that's broad and welcoming and still focused and helpful and expert um, and how we can get sort of some a, a focus sorry a culture and community that works for everyone okay now we should start to give a little context here stack right. overflow is what so stack overflow is a question and answer site specifically for software developers mm -hmm. so you, know, you can't ask you know, how should i groom my cat uh, you can ask questions about software development. Okay. And it's deliberately designed to be for questions that are answerable, so not opinion-based questions, you know, which is the best web framework out of these, mm -hmm. what programming language should I work next, uh, learn next. Those are perfectly valid questions, but they're not suitable for Stack Overflow. Okay, and then um, I'll provide a little bit more context. There's a scoring system on Stack right, Overflow yep. that says if you answer a question correctly, you get points, and if you ask somebody upvotes your question, you get more points, right. and you have by far the most points of yep. anyone on yep. Stack Overflow. So I have the highest, they're called reputation, so I have the highest reputation, um, and it's important to understand that reputation is not a measure of technical skill, it's a measure of how much people have liked answers and questions that you have posted. Okay, I, I bring so that up because your opinion is very valid on this topic. Right, I, I certainly You're, have you are a well lot respected of experience. In Stack yep, uh, I have a lot of experience of Stack mm -hmm. Overflow, mostly from an answering perspective. Mm -hmm. What I don't have experience of is interacting with Stack Overflow as a newcomer to programming. Because oh, I wasn't a newcomer to programming when Stack Overflow started. Okay. So, you know, how would I know what it's like to come and knowingly be fearful and you know stack overflow has got mm. a bit of a reputation itself as an unfriendly place okay um and that's something i would like to be a small part of fixing oh all right uh tell me why is it unfriendly what's uh, so why do you say that it has a reputation for being unfriendly and sometimes that's deserved i would say okay. so people i i've described some kinds of questions that aren't welcomed and aren't suitable. They're not what Stack Overflow was designed for. You okay. know, they're, they're uh, to give a car analogy, you know, it's perfectly reasonable to want to drive a family of kids, uh, you know, a family of parents, kids, from one place to another. Um, if you try doing that in uh, a Formula One car, that won't work very well. Mm. Likewise, if you take an SUV and try to drive that in a Formula One race, that won't work very well either. And I'm a firm believer that it's it's fine for Stack Overflow to be focused on the particular kind of things that it does really well. Okay. Um, so some people don't know that about the site. You know, we the site tries to tell them before they ask a question. Yeah, but they may come in there and ask but, uh, an inappropriate question. Right. And, uh, um, and the response isn't always The response like, isn't as compassionate mm. as I would like it to be. So one of the things that I am very aware of in not just software, but but particularly software communities, um, is how important compassion is. And that's not just between software developers, but being compassionate and empathetic for your users. Um, and that's one area where I, I'm a big proponent of diversity within software teams. Okay. Um, and the more life experience and varied experience you have as a team, the better you are able to be empathetic. So that's sort of way broader than just Stack Overflow. Okay. Um, but uh, I had a point here, and I can't. Yeah, so people uh -huh. people are sometimes not as welcoming as they might be. So um, they'll just downvote the question, close it, um, maybe with comments that are massively unfriendly, and it it's really difficult actually. And I try to do this, and I don't know how successful I am to say 
right, I'm going to vote to close this question. It's not really suitable for this website, but that doesn't invalidate you as a human being. Don't, <laughs> yes. don't feel you're an awful human yeah, being. Yeah, closing the question, yeah. communicating why you're closing it, those are all perfectly valid. Calling right. you names and saying yeah. you're, you're a fool for asking this question, that's crossing the line. Absolutely. And some people do and, that. And sometimes, so some people do that, and there are things that are obviously rude. What's harder is when things can be perceived as rude and they were not intended as rude. So if you are just, and this is probably where I fall down, if you are just brief mm -hmm. and say, sorry, this isn't an appropriate question for Stack Overflow, we don't really handle opinion-based questions well. It's like, that's brief and it's useful to be brief so that I can do the same thing or spend my time helping on questions that are useful, uh, that are appropriate for the site. Mm -hmm. But that curtness can feel hostile. Oh. And it, it's not intended that way, hmm. but that's where the empathy applies, that actually we know that people don't always receive messages the way we intended them. Yeah, especially when it's text only. Right. And if you're mindful of that, it can it can help. So there are ways that there are reasons why you might not put a comment at all and you know you downvote the question when and if someone wants to know what a downvote means, they can hover over the arrow and it says, you know, this question wasn't well researched or whatever it is. Um, but maybe they won't do that. They won't know that. If they didn't read the piece of text that said, well, here's how to write a good question to start with, then they may well not read a piece of text saying what it means to be downvoted. And this is a bit of a system problem. Hmm. Um, and it's very, very hard when if we assume that people haven't read the text to start with, that they've been presented with, well, how can we make contact with them? And if you say get through to them, that again sounds hostile and I'm beating you up about, you know, you're doing the wrong thing. Hmm. And it's not always about off topic questions. In, in some ways, those are the easy ones because the site isn't missing out by right. closing an off topic question because it was never going to be right for the site to start with. Okay. Whereas there are other questions that are either poorly researched or the research hasn't been explained in the question or just right this code doesn't work please help it's like 800 lines of code <laughs> well i'm glad you showed me the code that's a good start because other way people say i've got a website and it doesn't work what should i do mm -hmm. like we can't possibly help on that wow. um there are all kinds of ways of writing a good question. So there are questions that are not good questions, but they got, they have the potential. Exactly. To be good exactly. Those are the folks that you want. I, and I really, I want to help those folks. Um, and the awful situation is when, actually, I've done this often enough. I can see where your problem is. Mm -hmm. I could just give an answer. And that would help you and help no one else. Give an answer to the problem that you guess that they're asking. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes termed psychic debugging. Okay. <laughs> um, which I think Eric Leppert coined as a phrase, but it's certainly it's been used and has gradually spread. Mm -hmm. um, or I can see the problem in your 800 lines of code. But actually, even if I give you that answer, it's sort of give man a fish kind of okay. thing. So not only is the post not helpful for future readers, which is a big, big point. And one of the things that's really hard to communicate when you first go to the site, the point of asking a question, yes, you're going to help fix your problem, but it will help other people trying to face the same problem. Right. And so it, I view it as uh, the, the phrase I use often is Stack Overflow is a repository of high quality questions and answers. Mm -hmm. And so you asking a poor quality question doesn't help that and me answering your poor quality question doesn't help that goal and I there see. are people who disagree with that as a goal and will answer any question and you know, they we just have different philosophies about things yeah but i think i've i've heard uh uh jeff and joel the, the right the, 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 the founders, founders of stack of, and founders of it, um, they've stated that same goal as well yes they don't they don't necessarily want people to go to stackoverflow.com they wanted to go to google and find right. yeah and, and often there will be someone else has had the same problem right. first. And if you do have a problem, Stack Overflow shouldn't be your first port of call anyway. It should be trying to work through your problem right. and you know, cut down that 800 lines of code to 40 lines of code that yeah. shows the same problem, but nothing else. Right. 
and that requires diagnostic skills mm -hmm. that we seem to be lacking as a community now. Mm. Um, the the golden, you know, the, the end state I would love to reach is if people still come to Stack Overflow without those diagnostic skills and they haven't gone through the, the series of steps for, I've got this problem, what's the answer? Mm. I would love it if Stack Overflow could either help teach them or divert them to other resources that will help teach them because it's I, I view empathy as a silver bullet in one sense and diagnostic skills as a silver bullet in another sense when you know how to work through problems you can work through any problem Correct. Um, knowing kubernetes in detail doesn't help you solve a javascript problem uh, but Whereas learning learning diagnostic t uh, techniques right. helps you with both of those right, exactly. and you don't need to be an expert in anything to, to step through those and try to think, right, I will try to minimize stuff. But when you're very, very new, that's a real challenge as well. And I would love it if more people who are teaching software teach that as one of the first things. Maybe, maybe the first program that you give people should be one that's broken. Mm. It's like, okay, we'll try to run this code. What happened? Oh, it didn't work. That's fine. Okay, ah, yeah. you are not broken because it is broken. <laughs> Let's help you move from there. Ah, like the failing test. Yeah. Let's start I, with the failing yeah, test. Yeah, oh, well, I, <laughs> if you're onto the stage of tests, that's like 401 already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the same principle, though. That's, yeah, that's, oh, absolutely. It's okay that the test failed because yeah. that's the whole point. Yeah, that teaches you something. Yeah. It's more information. So get, getting, uh, we talk about this community, the Stack Overflow community. Mm -hmm. There's three. There's really three people involved in the problem you described. One is the person asking the question. Yep. We don't have a whole lot of control over them, partly because they're, they're we never see them, we just have our answers, and partly because many of them never come back like right i think most of the people post yeah, their if people have post a bad never experience return. why would they especially if, yeah especially if they don't have a good experience uh the other person is people like you which you have a lot of control over right but uh because you can answer the question in a way that uh promotes self-learning and not mm -hmm. isn't rude isn't too curt right um but you don't scale that well Right, just one person, and then the third is, uh, you know, the overlords of Stack Overflow, the, the, right. the, the Jeffs there's and the actual Joel's system and the people designers. working there, yep. And, the, yep. and the system itself. Is, is there something they can do to make this community I, more? I think uh, there are things compassionate and more yep. tolerant. Um, and Stack Overflow is aware that all is not well. So, um, I don't want to make it sound too negative because. I think Stack Overflow is an awesome, awesome resource. So do I. And I want to make it awesome for more people. Right. That's the thing. And uh, I feel sometimes there are unfortunately plenty of people who will say Stack Overflow doesn't have a problem. People should grow a thicker skin and <laughs> just learn to suck it up. I will, and, I will yeah. say I will partly agree with that. People that ask uh, poorly designed questions and aren't interested in that, that's their problem. That's not our. We can just point that out to them or the people that aren't going to read the notes right. that you leave. At some point, people do have to take some responsibility they, for that. They do, um, yeah, and I would say... So I partially agree with that uh, that, that callous attitude right. that you just described. But it's, it's expressing that in a way that helps them learn rather right. than putting them I will off. agree with that that's as well. The, that's I don't, the wanna, I don't want a victim blame here. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, I'm... I'm fine with questions being closed as off-topic right. if they're off-topic. I'm fine with them being closed as duplicates. And on the other side of things, there are people who will say, you know, every question is valid. There's no such thing as a bad question. Uh, if someone's asked a rubbish question, then you don't know. Maybe they, whatever. It's like, that doesn't make it a good question. Um, so there's always the temptation to place yourself in the middle of two extremes and say, therefore, I must be reasonable. And that's a... Uh, and equally, it's a trap, okay? <laughs> That's putting okay. yourself above those people. Okay. Um, and you need to try to get into the experience of all of these people, um, which is hard. So part of the problem is humans, and that's where actually the system can help. If, if the system can notice that something isn't going to be well received before people get the chance to be frustrated with it, then maybe that can guide people along so I think there is room for uh, more guidance and more sort of enforced guidance, I think, uh, when asking a question. Okay. And I, I want to write all of this, all of my suggestions up in a 
probably very long blog post. I, mm. I took one hour out, strictly time box, to write uh, a brain dump of Stack Overflow and culture mm. as, as a blog post, which I wrote, and it was like three and a half thousand words um, as quickly as I could type, because I've been thinking about this for a long time. Mm. So brain dump of some of what's wrong on the human level, but what we can do on the system level, I think there can be guidance. So maybe have, if you're a new user, and you, you, you can waive this when people have asked 10 well-received questions or whatever it is, um, of checkboxes that you have to say, right, either there is no code relevant here or I've included code, okay. Um, uh, at least force them to think about that. Right, exactly. Uh, this is, you know, we were talking before we started recording about dates and times and I'm a f big philosopher, uh, sorry, big fan of the philosophy of do make me think. Right. right? People have choices that they ought to make mm -hmm. all the time, and they should think about those choices and be forced to make those choices. And then once they've made the choice, it should be easy to act on. Okay. Um, about many things, at least. Um, so dates and times are something like that. Yeah. And I think so is asking a question. It should be done in a deliberate manner. If you've spent less than... When I ask a question on Stack Overflow, it rarely takes me less than half an hour. Mm. And I'm pretty good at it. Right. So if you're a beginner, and you think that you can write a question in five minutes, I think it's worth having some way of saying, whoa, slow down here. You've got, you've got all the time in the world mm -hmm. to ask the question, and it's hard to make a first impression a second time. Right. You know, people say, oh, this was closed so quickly. Why didn't you give me a chance to, to improve it? You had all the time to improve it beforehand. Right. Um, so encouraging people to take a breath would be good. Uh, the other thing I really think that we should do as a system is um, value questions as much as we value answers. And the reputation system at the moment is you get five points for an upvote on a question and 10 points on an upvote for an answer. Hmm. And I think that came about largely in the early days of Stack Overflow where there weren't so many duplicate questions because there were very few questions. Right. Yeah. In the first 2,000 questions or whatever, like we loads of people have questions to ask that's great uh, we need them to get the attention of people answering so we'll reward answers more than questions mm -hmm. well at the moment I would say there's a, a shortage of good questions Interesting. so let's at least value good questions as mm -hmm. much as we value good answers okay and at that point that also has a psychological effect if people know the system and they don't sort of have oh it's a two-tier system it's answerers and askers and askers are valued less right that immediately puts the wrong sort of emphasis on hmm. um, so I think there are system things and while I personally don't scale um, Stack Overflow works because there are so many users who are so engaged yes um, and if everyone or even the vast majority there's a sort of herd immuni immunity here if almost everyone is being really nice, then it becomes easier to call out people who are being borderline. And I've started totally being a bit, a bit harsher in terms of, you know, if you feel a comment is rude, you can flag it as rude when you're beyond a certain reputation. Um, and these days there are comments that I wouldn't have flagged before and I am flagging now because their responses to a bad question, but they're not helpful responses. They're, they're responses that make the person giving the response feel good yeah, I've really told I them. Feeling um, right. in intellectually not, superior yeah, by talking down yeah. to someone. Um, and it Re doesn't Reddit is good for that. All right, I, <laughs> I don't use Reddit much, and maybe I, this is I why. I used Reddit for a little while last year, and I realized that somebody t put some nasty comments on a post of mine, right. like personally insulting ones, and I thought, well, I should probably flag this. And I went and looked at the rules for flagging them, and they explicitly say it's okay to be rude to people. That is not a wow. valid reason for flagging. Whereas in Stack Overflow has a be nice policy. It is totally so not. Reddit you can does flag not, for it, being it shows. Rude. So you're talking um, about uh, right. there's a whole culture around Stack yeah. Overflow that yeah. once you get a bunch of people nice to each other, then it's, there's pressure on newcomers to be right. nice. And I fundamentally, think Reddit is kind of the opposite, at least the <laughs> maybe it's the slash I don't know. R's I'm in. Um, <laughs> so while I think it's reasonable for people to take responsibility, um, I think saying you should grow a thicker skin yeah. is never the right. People shouldn't have to tread on eggshells. They should put in the effort, right. um, but no one should have to put up with abuse of any kind. I agree with that. And I think this is where uh, women, 
and people from underrepresented communities within tech mm. may feel, even if no one is being racist to you okay. explicitly, and maybe your race isn't even obvious from your profile, mm. you come with a lived experience. Mm. And it's probably not the same as my white male privilege lived experience. Okay. And if you're used to, am I going to be judged by this? Uh. Then you, it's, you may interpret comments in a different way hmm. and be absolutely ready. If you have microaggressions all through your life right. and you ask a question on Stack Overflow and get another microaggression, what are you going to do? You're going to say, that's, that's not something I want in my life. Right. And then, um, then, then there's less diversity and the community is, exactly, is exactly. not enhanced um, by that. Yeah, so, so the blog post that Jay Hanlon from Stack Overflow wrote explicitly called out sort of, we are underserving these parts of our community. Hmm. And there was a lot, but we're not racist, we're not sexist. Like, it doesn't have to feel sexist to hurt those communities more. Hmm, interesting. Um, and this is where trying to get some empathy, and I'm not, it can come over very preachy as I'm doing this and I'm saying this, um, as if I'm the perfect person, I, I know <laughs> everyone's lived experience. Yeah. I know I'm not, but at least I know I'm not. And, right. and it's taken me, this has only been in the last few years that I've become more aware of my privilege, which is a word that triggers a lot of people to say, I've worked hard for everything I've done. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Privilege is a complicated topic. That's you know, for another whole talk. No, I totally agree. Um, I I, uh, I think it's I'm kind of in the same bubble you are. I'm a white male and uh, right. making a nice living, and uh, I, yeah. you know, I've got a lot of things going for me that not everybody else has. Right, right. And so it's hard sometimes to see that perspective. Yeah, from marginalized groups. And, and it know, doesn't and, mean that and we without, haven't without, worked without hard. having that conversation, without explicitly bringing that up. Right. You yeah, know, we're not going to solve the two of us white guys are going to solve <laughs> no, it here. No, but no, at least no. we're talking about it. That's yeah, a, that's a step. Um, and and recognizing that people will come with different perspectives, and that yeah, uh, if this is the only thing that you have to grow a tougher skin to to be, then maybe that's the choice you make. Okay. But no one should have to. Mm -hmm. the, you know, microaggressions are still aggressive, and yeah, I apologize now on on camera for when I have done that and, and when I I've been <laughs> passive aggressive I'm quite good on the whole passive aggressive thing you couldn't fault me because I'm being so polite but that's yeah I'm clearly you're putting someone down yes. <laughs> that's, that's a British thing isn't yeah it? I think it is uh, <laughs> probably a somewhat British trait am I stereotyping um, not unfairly well, I think though I, you know, <laughs> there are there are some stereotypes that are born out of generalized truth that certainly doesn't then apply to everyone but i'll hold them hold my hand up to passive aggression um and you know again hopefully by saying it i can reduce it um but yeah so i i think stack overflow has things that can happen in the system and things that can happen with users and one of the reasons why i'm going to write a blog post when i when i can find time to really put my fairly chaotic thoughts in some kind of order is because I'm you're talking about privilege again, I have the privilege of being the top rep user and rightly or wrongly, people will listen to me more than they listen to other people. Right. Um, and that's mostly wrongly. You know, my opinion isn't really worth more than anyone else's. You know, other than maybe if you're gonna argue with me about C-sharp, then I may have more experience than you. seem to you. know a lot about C-sharp. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's a lot that's just personal experience. Um, but if people are gonna listen to me, then yeah, I will. I will use that privilege, hopefully for good. Yeah. Um, and if I can persuade other people that maybe they should be less curt and stop mentally, even if they're not saying people should grow a thicker skin, if they're acting in a way that makes it seem like they believe that, right. then let's stop doing that. Yeah, a lot of it, I think, is awareness. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned your blog post. What's the URL of your blog? Uh, so codeblog.johnskeet.uk, and okay. I have a non-code blog which. Uh, I don't post terribly often too. It's mostly about feminism, uh, but just blog.johnskeet.uk. John, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Technology is awesome. Friends are more awesome. Don't let one replace the other.